Hey everybody, it's Lon Seibman, and we're taking a look today at the Asus Chromebook Flip C302. This is not to be confused with the Chromebook Flip we looked at about six months ago, which is uh, smaller and less powerful. This is the new uh, higher-end version. It sells for about $499, and uh, as you might expect, given that it has Flip in the name, you can flip it around and put it into different modes, like display mode, like so. Uh, you can put it into tent mode if you want to do something like that, or of course have it uh, function as a tablet where the keyboard uh, folds down underneath the screen. And it seems to be performing fairly well, although I'm finding some issues uh, switching between modes. It looks like there might be some driver issues they haven't worked out yet with it. We're going to go into more detail on this though in just a second, but I do want to mention in the interest of full disclosure that I paid for this with my own funds. So all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review and no one is reviewing this content before it is posted. So let's get into the overall hardware here and then we will uh, take a look at its performance. So as you saw just a second ago, I was able to touch the screen because this is a touch screen, uh, 12 and a half inches IPS, really decent uh, display quality on this one and very bright. They rate the display at uh, 300 nits. It's got a core M3 processor on board. It's got uh, four gigabytes of DDR3 RAM and 64 gigabytes of eMMC storage. Fairly lightweight at 2.65 pounds. That is 1.2 kilograms, so not all that heavy, uh, which is a good thing, especially if you want to uh, flip it over into that tablet mode. It's not as cumbersome as uh, some heavier devices might be, although it does have a little bit of bulk to it, given the fact that you have to have the whole keyboard and uh, trackpad mechanism walking around with you on that. Uh, we've got a couple of ports on here, and of course they are now moving into the modern era of USB Type-C. So we've got a USB Type-C port on this side, as well as one on the other side. These are multifunction ports, so you can use them for power, you can use them for USB, uh, or you can use them to output display on it. So you do have some uh, flexibility there. Volume rocker over here, a, a power button right there, headphone, microphone jack over there. The speakers are on the side here on both sides. Stereo, good, decent separation. They sound uh, pretty decent for a small laptop like you might expect. Another USB Type-C port here and a micro SD card slot on that side. All metal design, really nice uh, build quality overall. And Asus says you get about 10 hours of battery life out of this. My testing is probably in that ballpark. I'm seeing about eight to 10, depending on uh, what you're doing with it. Uh, putting Android apps on it, of course, will uh, perhaps drain the battery faster than just running with the Chrome browser. And the keyboard and trackpad on this one are also pretty nice. This, of course, follows the uh, Google mandated keyboard layout for Chrome OS devices. But uh, as I found, not all keyboards are created equal, even if they look the same. So this one, of course, has all the decent spacing and key size you would expect out of a Chromebook, but it's got very nice key travel here, as you can see. So a uh, really deep travel for a pretty thin laptop, very comfortable to type on, uh, and it is backlit as well. Uh, so nice premium feel and look to this one. A uh, very nice trackpad here, too. It's a click pad like you you see on many modern laptops and uh, very responsive and uh, seems to be working quite well for what I am doing with it. So all in, this is a very premium kind of Chromebook, or at least a mid-range uh, Chromebook, which is kind of a new uh, sector of the Chromebook market because we've had the low-end Chromebooks and then the really super high-end ones, and the ones in the middle haven't uh, been all that prevalent. But we're going to be seeing more and more of these uh, powered by more powerful processors. And the reason is, is that uh, Google Play, the Android app store, is coming to Chrome OS. In fact, we're going to have it running on here a little later in the review. And uh, that requires, of course, having computers with more storage and more memory to be able to accommodate those apps. But uh, those apps are the same apps you'll buy on your phone or on your tablet that you'll be able to run uh, on your Chrome OS device. And if you have those on your Google account already, you don't have to pay for them again either. And uh, that is why we're going to be seeing more of these computers kind of in the middle of the market. So again, they're going to be uh, trying to find a price point that keeps them just under the price point of comparable Windows machines and uh, they're hoping that consumers will find these more useful now that they can run apps in addition to just uh, looking at websites and whatnot. So let's take a look and see how it performs on the web and then we'll take a look at a few Android apps. All right, so let's start off with some YouTube video here. We've got our 1080p 60 frames per second file that I like to test on uh, most of these devices that we look at. And uh, like many other uh, Chrome OS devices or other just regular laptops running Chrome OS, we do see that uh, you occasionally will get a drop frame or two as you're playing back 
uh, some of this higher end video content. This is an issue related to optimizing uh, video playback for Intel chips. It's an ongoing issue I've seen with Chrome OS. These devices are more than capable of playing back this video without a single drop frame, but uh, again, it's something I'm seeing on YouTube quite a bit, but it's not as noticeable on here as it might be on a lower end Chromebook because the Core M3 chip in here is a lot faster and able to keep up, but it's just something that Google can fix via software, which they haven't yet done. So video playback is less than perfect, but again, I think for most consumers, they're not going to uh, notice any difference. And Netflix and Amazon Video and the other things you might watch will be fine. It's just that if you are a techie looking for absolutely perfect, uh, no drop frames playback, you still won't get it here on some of the higher end videos on YouTube. Uh, web browsing overall, though, seems to be a pretty enjoyable experience on here. Very quick and responsive. You got AC wireless built in, so uh, the uh, wireless technology is up to date and uh, web browsing here is a, a very good experience. I, think, I don't think you'll have any issue browsing the web or doing uh, Google Docs or apps or anything else like that. I also ran the Octane benchmark test, which is how we see uh, numerically how it might stack up with other laptops in its class. And we got a score there of 21,244. Puts it in line with other Core M devices we've looked at recently. I was surprised actually it did a little better than uh, the ThinkPad X1, which has the same generation Core M5 chip. But uh, overall, it's about where I would expect it to perform a decent device that uh, is giving us the kind of speed we would expect from a Core M processor. And that Core M processor delivers some performance on Android apps as well. Now I am recording this in early 2017, right when this came out. At the moment, this is not going to be installed by default on your uh, Chromebook here, but you can go and move this Chromebook into what's called the beta channel uh, to get it. And I've made a video on my extras channel to show you how to do that. And it's not just this Chromebook, book either. There are many others that can uh, install Android apps right now, but you do have to go into perhaps a less stable version of Chrome OS to do it. But if you are very eager to try it out, uh, you can have at it. And this one actually performs uh, quite nicely. So I'm going to go down to my uh, taskbar down here and pull up a uh, game I'm running. This is an emulation of uh, Street Fighter Alpha 3 running in MAME. And you can just see how fast and responsive it is uh, playing here because this has a pretty decent size uh, processor on board to really uh, do things like classic game emulation quite well. And it will also do other things like play modern Android games too. Now just remember though that this is still in beta and uh, some apps may not work great. Some apps may not work at all. Some might run a little slower than you think they might. Uh, so again, you're going to have to just kind of play around with your stuff. And if your uh, favorite app isn't running well yet, it might uh, do so in the future. One thing that you will run into though is that not many of these apps allow for the resizing of windows all that well. So uh, for example, on this one, I can uh, minimize it or uh, maximize it, but I have a hard time doing any other kind of window adjustment on it. And apps like Kodi will run on here, but they won't perform all that great when you do get it up and running. So I can uh, just go to the Android app here. You can see it loads up and it gives us that really small window. I can make the window full screen here by uh, maximizing the title bar. But again, I'm still dealing with having the title bar up top and of course the task bar at the bottom. And I also found that movie playback on it is less than ideal with some crazy artifacts and stuff. So not ideal yet for multimedia playback and other things, but you do have the uh, Chrome OS native media player for playing back your video files on it. But I was able to run the Android 3D Mark Slingshot test just to see how it might stack up against other things we have tested here on the channel. And on that test, we got a score of 3,657, which puts it uh, pretty much in line with many other higher end Android devices we have tested here on the channel. So it really, it should actually perform around there just given what it has uh, for processing power inside. Uh, but again, over time, this is going to get better optimized as uh, Google gets Android and Chrome OS uh, playing more nicely together. So I think, again, it's still in beta. It'll probably be there for a little while longer, but you can get those apps up and running on this Chromebook. And if your app is compatible, it's going to run very nicely given what this has for uh, horsepower under the hood. So overall, I have to say this is a very nice Chromebook. You'll pay a little bit more for it, but you're going to get a lot more performance out of this than you might out of a $200 Chromebook. You also get the backlit keyboard and the better build quality as well. The only fault I'm finding with it is that it's still a little slow to recognize uh, changes in its orientation. So as I flip into display mode here, it takes a second or two for it to realize that I want to do that. So it should be already switching right now and it hasn't yet done that. 
Sometimes it switches right away. Other times it takes a little bit longer. Um, so it is something that's a bit of a frustration for me at the moment, but I am uh, certain this is probably just the software issue that uh, will get resolved eventually because you can see it is catching up here as I'm uh, twirling it around and whatnot. But it is a, a point of frustration at the moment that I do hope gets resolved soon. But uh, otherwise, this seems to be a pretty solid Chromebook and something that I can recommend for those looking for a little bit better than the low end. This is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.